In this video, we'll be explaining everything a private pilot needs to know about the attitude indicator and how it works. Just like the heading indicator, the attitude indicator is one of the six primary flight instruments, also known as the six pack. And just like the heading indicator, it's also a gyroscopic instrument. The purpose in the attitude indicator is to measure the aircraft's pitch and bank in relation to the horizon without looking outside. Because of this, some pilots refer to this instrument as the artificial horizon. And as you can see, it's specially color coded for pilots so you can tell the difference between sky and dirt. Now there are a lot of different kinds of attitude indicators out there, but all of them have some kind of bank index so you can tell what the bank angle of your aircraft is. When your aircraft is in a bank or a roll, the roll pointer or roll indicator points to the exact bank angle that your aircraft is at. In addition to that, this miniature aircraft shows you the bank angle of your wings in relation to the horizon. When the roll pointer is centered on the bank index, the aircraft's bank angle is zero degrees. The first tick mark in both directions represents 10 degrees of bank. The second tick mark in both directions represents 20. The third tick mark in both directions represent 30 degrees of bank. On most attitude indicators, you'll find that these are just a little bit larger or bolder. Next, we have the markings that indicate 45 degrees angle of bank. On a lot of older training aircraft, you'll find that they don't have 45 degree markers. You'll have to use the Mark 1 eyeball to estimate the middle between the 30 and the 60 degree markers. And here are our 60 degree markers indicating 60 degrees angle of bank. Then these markers on the horizon let you know you're at 90 degrees of bank. Couple things I want to mention here. First, just because the bank index shows that your attitude indicator can reach high bank angles, it doesn't mean that your aircraft can. Make sure you check the POH for your bank angle limit. You don't want to over-G the airplane. Because remember, our bank angle is directly related to our load factor. Also, just because the airplane is in a bank doesn't necessarily mean the aircraft is turning. To find that out, you'd either have to look at your turn coordinator or look outside. Now let's take a quick look at how the attitude indicator indicates pitch. To determine the aircraft's pitch angle in relation to the horizon, we'll want to take a look right here at this little center point on the miniature aircraft. I call this the pipper. Now as you can see here, the pipper is right on the horizon right now. That lets me know that our pitch angle is at zero degrees. Then as you can see here, these larger graduations are showing you every 10 degrees of pitch up or down. Then these smaller graduations are showing you every five degrees of pitch. Now this miniature aircraft can be adjusted up or down to accommodate pilots of different heights. And you can do this by twisting this little knob left or right. And when you do this, you should really be on the ground for this. Or if you have to do it in flight, you should be in straight and level flight. Now, as we mentioned before, the attitude indicator is also a gyroscopic instrument. Now sometimes you will find attitude indicators that use electricity to spin the gyros inside of these, but on most training aircraft, you'll usually find that these use suction from the vacuum system to spin the gyro. So because of that, just like the heading indicator, if you're not getting good suction on the vacuum system, your attitude indicator won't work properly. Have you ever played with one of these as a kid? If you don't know what this is, this is a toy top that you spin and it maintains its balance by using the gyroscopic principles. The faster you spin a top, the more resistant it is to wobbling. As this mass spins around the axis, it becomes resistant to outside forces, to the extent that the top is actually able to maintain its balance on this sharp point as it rotates. And as I mentioned in the last video, this is called rigidity in space. And the attitude indicator has a similar gyro inside of it that's spun by the air from the vacuum system. Because of the spinning motion, the gyro rotor becomes rigid in space and wants to maintain its position. Gimbals are then attached to the rotor axis, allowing the aircraft to move around the stable gyro. The gimbals are then mounted to the inside of the attitude indicator. That way, it can still maintain its position in space. Then it's connected to this horizon reference arm, which is connected to the horizon on your attitude indicator. And as the aircraft rolls and pitches, the horizon line maintains rigidity in space along with the gyro rotor. Now, just like the heading indicator, the attitude indicator has a lot of moving parts inside of it. And as we continue our flight, friction between these parts causes our attitude indicator to be less accurate. We call this precession. But unlike the heading indicator where the pilot has to align the heading with the magnetic compass, we don't have to do this on the attitude indicator. On most older training aircraft, they have something called pendulous vanes. When the aircraft is in straight and level, non-accelerated flight, the vacuum system will periodically reset the horizon line. 
Now, something I want to mention about these attitude indicators is that a lot of the older ones have pitch and bank limits before the gauge begins to tumble. On most of these gauges, the bank limit is somewhere from 100 to 110 degrees, and the pitch limit is between 60 and 70 degrees. When these limits are exceeded, basically what you'll see is the horizon line spinning around violently inside of the attitude indicator. And I hope you're in visual conditions if this happens to you. Okay, enough of that. Let's take a quick look at the VFR day minimum equipment requirements. And as you look at this list, you'll notice that the attitude indicator isn't on here. But it is required for IFR flight. But that's a lesson for another day. Now, if you're lucky enough to fly an airplane with digital flight instruments like this one, you'll notice that the attitude indicator is huge on this guy. And probably the biggest difference is that the horizon line spans the entire length of the primary flight display, also known as the PFD. And that makes it really easy for the pilot to distinguish between the sky and the dirt. On these newer systems, they have something called an attitude and heading reference system, also known as AHERS. Inside of these magical boxes, they use solid state lasers to sense the pitch and bank of the airplane. This information is then sent to the primary flight display so it can be used by the pilot. And because these instruments use lasers instead of free spinning gyros, they don't tumble. Welcome to the future of aviation, for those who can afford it that is. Before you leave today, would you smash that like button for me? And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification so you don't miss out on videos just like this one. Well, not just like this one, but you know. Now check out this video right here. You know you want to. See ya! Yeah,